Hey everybody, Andy Brady. I've been uh, messaged by quite a few people asking for an update on the enclosure uh, that I designed and for my filament drying and keep filament dry environment that I created. Um, and I figured I would just kind of update everybody on what's going on here. Uh, the pitfalls, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, let me turn this camera around and uh, let me show you what's going on in here. All right. For anyone who doesn't know, um, I've got a video up there about making a 3D printing enclosure and for making an enclosure for all of the colors of filaments. I don't like to keep them in packaging. I like to get them out. I like to see them. I like to use them. Um, check out that video if you're looking to see you know, what's going on, uh, how this is made, how this worked out uh, in order to keep this contained. But basically, uh, the quick of it is we have a very inexpensive heater. We have bathroom racks purchased from Big Lots of all places for like $12 a piece or something like that, I don't remember. And uh, they hold filament quite perfectly. And what I've done is I have separated my filament into different types of categories. That way I can get to them whenever I need them. And basically I've got a humid humidistat, I've got a moisture meter. A uh, moisture meter works great at measuring the moisture of wood since it's very difficult to measure the moisture content of plastic. Running the heater in here does reduce the moisture, uh, but a little science behind that, you're not actually removing the moisture. Whenever you heat up a room, you don't actually remove the moisture. Uh, what you are doing is you are changing the psychometrics of the environment and you are saying you know, that the air is now bigger and as it gets bigger and it has lower it has the same amount of moisture in the air, then your actual relative humidity gets lower as well because your air gets bigger. So your amount of water stays the same, which means it's percentage, it's relative humidity goes down. By doing that and creating a warm environment, you will actually lend drying out of different things. Uh, so some of the pitfalls. One, I run out of room quite often. Um, I do end up still having to keep stuff in bags uh, aside. Um, I have made the mistake of leaving something a little bit too close to the heater. And as you can see, it was like a death ray. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this one right here like that and see if it uh, reflattens out. Speaking of which, this is my spool adapter that I designed for my bamboo because bamboo does not like to print small, well, can't print small filament um, or odd shaped rolls. So I designed this, um, it's very easy, very quick, and it will allow you to use any of these small filament rolls, uh, whether you've got free ones, you know, with sometimes a larger purchase, or you like to do like I like to do and just buy a huge box of a whole bunch of different sizes and colors, uh, because I don't need glitter pink, but every once in a while my daughter wants something glitter pink. So, grand scheme of things, I you know, spent only a couple hundred dollars on all the materials, uh, most of which I already owned. Uh, so really it wasn't that much in the grand scheme of things, maybe a hundred dollars. Um, and with this very quick and easy tent, I was able to actually work pretty good wonders here. All right, just a quick recap for everyone who loves their filament dryers. Um, I'm able to store 50, 60, 70 rolls comfortably in here. I'm able to maintain a humidity. Um, by lowering the humidity, you can actually allow the moisture that's trapped inside the plastic to exit and leave the environment. Uh, just a little bit about psychrometrics. It's very, very difficult to measure the moisture content of plastic. Um, it just inherently is. Uh, but what I use in my profession, I'm an indoor air quality expert, is I've got a moisture meter with pins and I can cram them into the wooden base here and I can actually measure the actual percentage of moisture content in the wood. Typically in a house, you're looking for about 11% or less moisture content in any random piece of wood. But in an environment where I'm trying to make a dry box, I'm actually looking for less than that. Um, and I'm regularly at about the 7% mark. In fact, some of the wood actually started to crackle a little bit, which in my opinion is a very good sign. Uh, but again, for all you, you know, filament drying experts and uh, you know, people who have bought many, many devices or built whatever on earth, including, you know, let's say a Rubbermaid tub full of silica packets, you know, which does work. Um, when you raise the temperature, the humidity automatically goes down. Right, so uh, because of that, don't be fooled whenever you go out and you buy one of these very expensive filament dryers that um, you know immediately shows you results because the moisture content and the humidity plummeted. Well, again, you warm the air, you plummet the humidity, even though the moisture content hasn't changed in the environment. So it's basically what we're doing here. Is we're, this isn't actually a dryer. It's not actually a dehumidifier. There is no device here pulling moisture out of the air and draining the moisture away like a dehumidifier in a house would do. Um, maybe that's the next step, but uh, so far hasn't been needed. Very cheap, very inexpensive. Go watch the video of how I built this. Um, be able to get away with 
probably something very similar to this depending on your environment uh, without having to build the structure and support you know I've seen people send me videos where they built the exact same thing in a closet they built the exact same thing underneath their cabinetry uh, they're getting creative where they're building it um, and that's um, that's definitely awesome. I like to see people DIYing something, a big solution, and saving a ton of money doing it by not buying different products. Uh, just one more thing I want to show you guys about this. All right, so right up inside of here, one more thing I want to show you guys that I did not show in the previous video. Uh, it is a product called Jago's Wall. Jago's Wall. I'll put a link uh, to my Amazon link in the description. Uh, but what this is designed for is it goes into an engine compartment and when the temperature gets above flame temperature, uh, which should never happen in here on a normal basis, uh, this thing actually explodes out of the ports on the front and it blasts uh, fire suppressant into the environment. So um, I picked these up, I believe for about $30 on Amazon. It's been a long time, uh, but I'll put the link in the description. Um, definitely something I think everyone should get whenever they're doing something like this, whenever they're doing 3D printing. The chances of a fire are getting more and more minimal, I believe, with newer and more modern uh, you know, devices that have you know, um, all kinds of safety mechanisms built in. But the, the, the chance is still real. Uh, I'm currently underneath my kitchen, so the last place that I want to light on fire is uh, my kitchen. Uh, you know, the underside of my kitchen catches out my kitchen on fire, uh, which is where the exit to my house is. So, you know, definitely something that a uh, little peace of mind can go a long way. I've got a bunch of these above the actual printers that are printing in the containment behind me as well. Uh, and I'll show you guys that whenever I show uh, kind of a recap on this device back here. Uh, but again, link there in that description. Um, and it does support the page if you uh, click our link and buy from there. But more importantly, even if you just Google it and you don't support the page, whatever, uh, buy one of these, put it in any environment, especially if you're putting a space heater in here. Um, you know, space heaters are known for having issues. This one here has you know automatic shut off. If it leans off the side, if it leans forward, you can see the lights cutting off. It actually stops working. If the temperature gets too high on it, it cuts the electricity and it stops working. So hopefully I've got some fail safes going on there, but you never know and better safe than sorry. So anyway, that is my update uh, after about a year or so, I don't know, maybe only eight months uh, since I built this thing and it has been going strong. I have uh, dried filament out in here that has been wet. I actually did an experiment. You can search my page and you'll find where I actually took some filament and soaked it in water overnight. Um, and then I just kind of patted it dry and then I set it in this containment on the other side over here where the heat would hit it and it dried out and within a day or so I was able to start running it through my um, my ender I believe is what I ran that one through and it started working just fine so um, very cheap investment highly recommend you go out and get it check my other video to see how to make it how to build it how to get this yourself Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I like to keep posting content on 3D printing and 3D building. Um, and it just takes you guys watching it and you guys clicking like and subscribe. Thank you so much.